Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first session of IPPF's new patient education series called Pass the Mic with Dr. Mike, the pharmacist. I'm Mike Regas. I'm a clinical pharmacist. I've been practicing for the last 40 years, the first 20 years in the hospital setting and the last 20 years in the home infusion setting, and have managed literally tens of thousands of autoimmune blistering disease patients in that time. So today we're going to have our first session. We're going to talk about what is the role of the pharmacist in helping to manage autoimmune blistering disease patients' medication needs. And many times, many patients may not be aware of all the needs that they have for medication until they become sick with a chronic disease like pemphigus or pemphigoid. In that situation, you may need to act, interact with several doctors, several pharmacists, several pharmacies, your insurance company, some pharmacy wholesalers, etc. So you may find yourself in a situation where you're having to interact with lots of these uh, groups of people you may not have experience with in the past. So the first thing I want to talk about is prescription processing. And that is the, the process that most people see. That is where the, the pharmacist acts as the coordinator between the physician, the pharmacist, and the payer. And the prescription is usually received electronically from the physician to the pharmacy. Then the pharmacist verifies several factors about the diagnosis, about the insurance company, about the um, age and weight and other past history of the patient, and then eventually submits that uh, information to the insurance company for authorization. In some cases, that may just take several minutes, maybe five or 10 minutes. It's done electronically for most oral medications, but if it is an intravenous medication that is costly, in the case of IVIG, it may be you know, five or $10,000 a month, then it may take days or weeks to get approved depending on the information provided by the doctor and information required by the insurance company. So once that authorization is obtained, then the insurance will approve it and then the, the therapy can start. And so, as I said, that could take anywhere from a few days to several weeks or longer, depending on how complex the process is. So next, the function that the pharmacist does is patient support and safety. And in, in this case, the pharmacist is spending significant time analyzing the prescription, making sure the patient is not gonna have any kind of clinical, time-wise, logistical or financial harm as a result of the prescription being processed and trying to minimize all those types of harm by picking the most uh, effective drug clinically that's also the most cost effective for the patient and results in the least out-of-pocket cost. And that may result in uh, require the interaction between the pharmacist and the physician and the insurance company in several different time periods in order to make that all happen. So the next section is the patient education. So once a prescription is approved and the payer is going to pay, then the patient needs to be educated about the prescription. And that's a very important function. Talk about the dose, the frequency, expected rapidity of drug effect, drug storage, expected side effects, and who to call if an issue occurs. Education may also include issues surrounding home safety, fall prevention, and tips to better manage other diseases the patient may have and other drugs the patient may have in combination with the drugs used to treat their immune autoimmune blistering disease. So the next, this is the fourth step now, is the billing and associated actions from the insurance company. And one of the most important functions is the customer service function, and that is what mostly surrounds the billing of the insurance company on the behalf of the patient and adjudicating the patient's out-of-pocket cost. And some patients may be fortunate and have very little out-of-pocket costs, Others may have to pay as much as 10 or 15% of the total bill, and that could be several thousand to 10 to $5,000 a year or more, depending on your insurance and what the, the dose is. So that's a big deal, and many case patients are not able to afford that out-of-pocket cost, and therefore the pharmacy may come to help you to figure out what kind of patient assistance plans and other plans are available that could help you cover the cost uh, either from the drug company who makes the drug or from other nonprofit private foundations that have money available. So while this is happening, the pharmacist is evaluating the out-of-pocket exposure to make sure that the exposure to you is the least, and that may, may consider buying other equivalent drugs or changing the prescription slightly with approval of the physician that may result in significant reductions in out-of-pocket cost. Um, finally, the patient, if the patient cannot afford their cost, as we said, there is a significant function to match the patient up with various 
out-of-pocket cost associated uh, financial plans that may be either made by the drug company or by the pharmacy itself or by nonprofit organizations. And finally, there is a, a concept called regulatory compliance, and that's a very obtuse concept. Many patients have never thought about that or maybe not even aware of it, but in this case, the pharmacist in the process of filling the prescription and billing the insurance company, which may be Medicare or Medicaid, has to abide by several rules and regulations. And also, they may be the result of several inspections that could come from the Board of Pharmacy, the patient's insurance company, Medicare or Medicaid, and those inspections may want the pharmacy to show the prescription, show the invoice that he or she actually bought the drug, and show the invoice that showed they actually billed the insurance company, and then the receipt from the patient showing they actually received the medication in their house and have been taking it. So this regulatory compliance function can be quite onerous. <clears throat> it's usually done on the back end after the prescription has been filled and, and the drug delivered to the patient already, but can result in several negative impacts on the pharmacy, up to including the loss of their license and or loss of the payer contract, which would allow them to not allow them to bill to that insurance company anymore. So that could be quite a, a problem for the pharmacy and may also result in a problem for the patient. So finally, the pharmacist is able to coordinate all these issues, that is prescription processing, patient support and education, uh, patient safety, billing and associated actions with the insurance company and the regulatory compliance functions all happen <clears throat> in a smooth and <clears throat> timeline that start with the very prescription processing and end with the regulatory compliance. And this process continues each time with the, every time the prescription is filled again. So at this point, I'm gonna stop. Um, this has only been about a five or six minute video and I want to open this up for questions right now to see exactly what um, questions may have occurred. It seems like we've rapidly gone through these items, but the point of this is to be short and sweet and to get uh, patients to start thinking about their situation with their prescriptions, who to ask and who to interact with and what to expect. So at this point, I'm gonna sign off. Um, this is Dr. Mike saying, I'll see you the next time for our next, which we're gonna talk about the next subject in our series. And right now we have about 10 of these planned. So please stay tuned. And if you wanna ask questions directly to me, then along with this video, you'll receive a link where you can send questions directly to IPPF that will be forwarded to me. And I can answer them either directly back to you or in future videos that we would make in this series. Thank you and good night.